Yesterday, we learned some staggering information regarding the military Black Hawk helicopter that crashed into the CRJ-700 airliner at Washington last week. The NTSB held a meeting yesterday, and uh, Senator Ted Cruz and some law lawmakers uh, were behind closed doors with the NTSB. And afterwards, Senator Ted Cruz answered some questions. And he gave us the following information, that the ADSB out of the helicopter, that functionality had been turned off. They were using mode C transponder, but not the ADSB out function. In addition, we learned that the NTSB uh, preliminary findings show that the pilot were in fact wearing night vision goggles. So while this is preliminary, both of these, th these uh, this information is quite important and staggering uh, because ADSB is a safety system. It's a system for better aviation safety. So in this video, I'm going to explain what ADSB is because, and if you're wondering, uh, if, if you're confused, don't worry, most pilots are still confused about it. ADSB stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. It's a tip, it's a dumb name for a pretty sophisticated system. I don't know who, in, who came up with the name, but he was not very in, imaginative. And so um, let's let's see what is this automatic dependent surveillance broadcast system. Back in the old days, uh, before 2010, uh, aircraft used to you have to have mode C transponders in their airplanes in order to fly into controlled airspace. So first, what is it, what is controlled airspace? Well, around busy airports and above certain altitudes, air, airspace is controlled. Also above military bases, certain restricted areas, airspace is controlled. You cannot fly in there. Washington is one of them. You cannot fly, get within 50 miles of Washington without getting into controlled airspace. And we used to have mode C transponders. A mode C transponder looked something like this. This I pulled out of my own airplane. It has five buttons. The first button on the left is the on off switch. It has a few settings in between test and standby and altitude. And then it has a code that you can enter with four buttons. Each button ha can you can set as a digit from zero to seven. So when you were when you first made contact with air traffic control, whether you're on the ground or you're in the air, if you're doing a flight, uh, you, you, if you are uh, submitting your flight plan or if you just switch over from one tower to the next, they would assign you a code and they would ask you to enter the code in your transponder. And you enter that code and then <clears throat> the transponder sends out a signal. It's an analog signal. And the signal that it sends out is your aircraft's altitude and its code. And so the air tra traffic controller could look at the radar screen and they could assign that code to your blip on the radar screen. And now they can follow you and they know, know who you are and who they are speaking to. So you would keep your transponder on that code until you left that airspace. And, and if you're back into just VFR, general airspace flying, you would put it on 1200 and if you fly into a new air traffic controlled area they might assign a new code to you or keep the old code and then you would make a new you would, you would make those adjustments now the altitude for a mode c transponder is based on barometric pressure the the atmosphere uh, the pressure is high close to the earth and the higher up you go the lower the pressure gets and so that is used to, to measure altitude. Now, of course, on hot days, temperature, humidity, you know, all these things affect air pressure. So every day, every and even in a long flight, you would have to calibrate your instrument. But these types of altimeters are based on pitostatic pressure. And there's a little pitostatic uh, sensor that... Um, that uh, and you can you can adjust it with this knob. You can calibrate it with this knob here. But that is your altimeter. 
based on air pressure. This is not very accurate. Air pressure can vary significantly. There are air pockets that could have low pressure and high pressure. Hot air, cold air, you fly just over a lake and the temperature of the air and the humidity and the density of the air changes. And so you, the, the indicated altitude um, is very dependent on the pressure of the air that you are flying in. So um, this is not the most accurate way to get a plane's altitude. So also it's a very antiquated and antiquated system, the radar, the old radar that we have. And so a modern, more precise way of measuring aircraft's positions have been implemented. And as of January 2020, the FAA required all aircraft that want to operate in controlled airspace to have ADS-B out. ADS-B out replaces the transponders with a new unit that's basically a swap. It's basically the same size, um, but you get them in different shapes and sizes now. And what this is, it can still send out that code. It, can, it still has barometric pressure based altitude that it can send out, but it also has an antenna on top of the airplane that, read, that re collects GPS signals from GPS satellites. And that G those GPS signals is then fed into a GPS unit in the, in the ADS-B out unit that computes the aircraft's position, speed, and altitude. Very precisely, this is a WAAS GPS, W-A-A-S, which is the most, which is a very accurate GPS, and it can it can determine your lateral position within a meter, within 3.3, 3.4 feet. The the the, uh, the <clears throat> height or the vertical error is slightly larger. I don't know what what the latest is, but it's slightly larger than the lateral error, but it's still very accurate, more accurate than simply relying on a pressure altitude. The, um, the ADS-B, so the ADS-B unit now knows where you are. It uses GPS to compute your position if you have this in your aircraft and if it's turned on. Then there's another antenna on the belly of the airplane. This antenna transmits all that information your, your tail number, your aircraft type, your uh, position speed and geometric altitude and your barometric altitude, it sends that out to towers that are on the ground. And there are thousands of towers all over the United States and Canada that can pick up these signals from aircraft. That's ADS-B out. The towers send the signal to air traffic control centers and they have it on displays and they can see the traffic just like they would on the old radar screens. And it's now modern now, it's all digitized, it's all computers, it's all um, upgradable, you know, the software. It's, it's, it's not the old antiquated system. That's ADS-B out. And what this means is that if the old, if this Blackhawk from last week had its ADS-B out turned off, they were flying with the old system, just with the barometric pressure type transponder with the old analog signal and the code, and they did not. They, but more importantly, most importantly, what you should realize is any other aircraft in the area, including the CRJ-700 that, that, collided, that it collided with, would not have the Black Hawk on ADS-B traffic in the cockpit. ADS-B, that is called ADS-B in. <clears throat> and um, ADS-B in is a different system. It could be on the same unit. 
It could be on the same unit. These days you get units that have ADS-B in and out on the same unit. But ADS-B out is basically a display in the cockpit. And this is typically a moving map showing your aircraft's position, speed and altitude in the center. And then you can zoom in and out on that map and you can also get traffic of the, all the other aircraft that has ADS-B out. You can see them on the display. And they have their positions, speeds and altitudes are given as well as their types and tail numbers. All of that information is on the display and you can access it in the cockpit. You can have it as a separate unit, as a like a GPS unit that's um, in the instrument panel, and you can you can see it there. Or you can have it on your iPad. You can fly with an iPad that's connected to a separate WAS GPS, and that will show you the, all the other traffic as well. And you can zoom in and out, and you can if the air traffic control says to you. There's an airplane here. You can look out to see on a map. It's over here. There it is. I can see it. And this helps you with your situational awareness. And it's also accurate. It's not. It's not off by a lot of uh, a lot of distance. You can you can pinpoint it very quickly. So this is very very helpful. But with this turned off, nobody would have seen this Black Hawk. So the Black Hawk is basically flying as far as other traffic is concerned, like it's invisible. I'm invisible, I'm not going to be visible to you on your ADS-B displays. Only the air traffic controller can see the helicopter on its radar. Why would they have done that? Well, I imagine that they are practicing perhaps, let's say they are doing a practice run of evacuating the president to a safer location. There's an attack of some kind and they are evacuating the president to a safe location and they don't want their position to be given away. So in the checklist, before they even take off, there might be an item that says turn off ADSB transponder, right? And so when they are training for it, they would go through the checklist and they would take care of all of those items on the checklist. And I'm, success I'm suspecting that is what happened. In addition, I believe the FAA has a facility in the regulations to request an exemption and to request that to fly the flight with ADS-B turned off. And so I'm guessing, and I don't know what the actual circumstance were, but I believe that the uh, helicopter probably requested this from ATC before they took off and said, we request ADS-B off on this flight. And they were simply flying with mode C. Now, if you watched my previous video, <coughs> um, there were a lot of mistakes made by the Black Hawk helicopter. Uh, if you haven't, please go and watch that and listen to, the, listen to the Black Hawk's responses to air traffic controls um, calls, calls where they said, uh, there's a CRJ, and immediately the, the Black Hawk helicopter says, we have the aircraft in sight, request visual separation. And just before they hit the airplane, they said, do you have the CRJ in sight? Pass behind the CRJ, and the Black Hawk said, we have aircraft in sight, we request visual separation. Um, and when they said pass behind the all pass behind the CRJ, all this helicopter needed to do was just hover or or slow down, and let the other plane pass in front of them, land, and then they can proceed. And that would have been that would have worked. But I don't care whether this aircraft was at 200 feet, at 150 feet, 100 feet, or at 50 feet, they should not have been in front of a landing aircraft or of an aircraft taking off for that matter. Landing and taking off are the two most critical parts of a flight and you should not have any other traffic in front of them or intersecting with those uh, uh, 
takeoff or landing patterns. Um, so I believe there was a flight planning problem with the Black Hawk. I think there was a training problem with the Black Hawk. I believe there was an attitude problem with the Black Hawk where they were not uh, responding to air traffic control precisely and accurately. I don't believe that they had anything in sight when they said, we have the aircraft in sight, request visual separation. I don't think they should have requested visual separation because they didn't have anything in sight. I think they just checked boxes there. And furthermore, I mean, if they were practicing a secret mission or a national security mission like evacuating the president, the president is dead. The president is dead along with 67 other people because you crashed into another airplane. That makes it even worse. It makes it even worse that the procedures were so lapsed that they crashed into an airplane. Uh, the horizontal separation in this instance is more important than the altitude. And I think that um, there's now some discrepancy about what their actual altitude was because the um, altitude was not based on ADS-B, on GPS, which is more accurate. It was based on air pressure. So <clears throat> um, we'll see what the NTSB uh, releases as far as the outcome of the investigation. But it's my conclusion, and I, you know, just my preliminary um, conclusion here is that there were vast errors and vast mistakes uh, on the on the side on the on, on the side of the Black Hawk crew. They were wearing night vision goggles, which impaired their vision multiple ways. The, getting washed out, peripheral vision impaired, you know, depth perception impaired, the ability to scan instruments and scan outside, scan for traffic impaired. They were flying in a very busy airport and in busy uh, busy airspace, a restricted airspace near landing and taking an aircraft taking off. And their situational awareness of landmarks and of the airport and of uh, traffic patterns there was abysmal. Um, they 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 responded to the uh, rec to to the air traffic controller calling out traffic as if they had them in sight immediately, when clearly they didn't. And so there are a lot of questions about what is happening in, with the training of these pilots. So we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. See you next time. To do, but but there are other lessons. Uh, to be learned from this, and, and, and I asked the FAA today to conduct a review of helicopter routes, not just at DCA, but at other airports across the country to, to determine uh, where there are risks of a similar such collision. I, I also asked the Army to reconsider and assess with what frequency is the Army turning off ADSB out uh, on, on military missions, particularly missions that do not have a sensitive national security component. Now, it's worth noting, the Black Hawk had a transponder, so it would appear on radar, but ADSB out is significantly more accurate. Uh, the NTSB has recommended ADSB in and ADSB out on all aircraft, uh, and that's something I expect the committee to, to consider and assess. Um, all of these are, are reasonable, important questions to ask in the wake of this accident. At the same time, I would caution what I said before. We need to look to the evidence and actually understand what happened here. All right, thank you.